Right, so we've just got these uh, pre-production PCBs for the uh, iPod Nano installation back and um, we've had one or two of them, uh, the LCD connector um, had some issues with them not not sitting in the right place during reflow so um, I've had to do a little bit of rework and I thought I'd just uh, do a quick video showing you how I did it. Uh, it took a few goes to get the right technique but um, I can now get these things off and on quite easily, fairly reliably now so uh, I thought I'd just share how I did it. Right, so here's the connector. Um, as you can see, it's ridiculously small. It's a um, 0.4 millimeter pitch. You can see next door this is a SOT23, um, that's an 0805, um, and that's a 1206 resistor pack, so you can get a, sort of a rough idea of the scale. So, um, first thing we're going to do is take this off with some uh, hot air. I was using a very small nozzle on there just to minimise any sort of collateral heating. Obviously there's quite a lot of scope for causing local damage. Right, I'm going to clean the solder up a little bit. Stick some flux on. I'm just going to, this is out, this was board was thrown with lead free, I'm just going to stick some lead in on it just to make it a bit easier to work with. So I'm just going to flood it with some uh, I did solder. And now I'm going to clean the pads off with uh, solder braid. What I tend to do for really sort of fine sensitive stuff like this, I tend to give the uh, the braid a bit of a soaking flux as well, just to make it work as well as it possibly can. You can never have too much flux. It's very important for fine stuff like this is that you don't wipe the braid across, you just dab it because otherwise you risk the, because the amount of heat you're applying there's not really much adhesion of the track onto the PCB so a very fine track it's very very easy just to take that lift out of the board so it's very important that you just sort of dab the uh, braid on and don't wipe it across because you'll very easily take a track with you if you do that. Right so that's Got pretty much all the solder off. Obviously with surface mount stuff it's very important you've got a nice flat pad because if there's any lumpy solder on it then the part isn't going to sit flat. I think that's pretty clean. So the next thing is to give it a clean. One thing about flux is it basically only works once. Um, once it's done its job it's then sort of pretty, pretty much just gunge on your PCB so it's important to clean it. So this is just um, flux clean. Then brush it on and then just dab it off with the uh, kitchen towel. Um, for just cleaning boards off, you know, sticking the sticking the um, cleaner on, then just dab it off with a paper towel is actually a very good way of getting rid of any surplus sort of flux. Because the flux just soaks into the uh, soaks into the paper towel nicely. So what we've got now is a nice clean set of pads there. You can see here, this this track here looks like it's moved very slightly in the process, but that's close enough to not be a big deal, I don't think. So once all the uh, clean has dried off, a bit more flux. This is made mostly to make the uh, pads a little bit tacky. Right, now, one of the problems um, with parts that are this small is that even a really fine solder paste or dispensing needle is just way way too big for these pads there's no way you'll ever get a dab on each pad um, and if you get a finer needle you just can't get the solder paste down it so it's not really practical to paste these pads another issue um, with these connectors is there's sort of metal bits underneath so if you get too much paste under there if that paste touches The sort of the inner the um, inner rows it could short. Um, so you, you know you can't have too much solder paste under there. But the problem is that with the, these things, um, 
the actual pin doesn't really extend very far out from the side of the body so um, about the only solution I found is this is actually a, a stencil from a prototype I've actually just cut out a piece of a stencil that's got the right footprint in it there's a stainless stencil I use for assembling the prototypes and fortunately we there's actually a nice clear path to actually get it flat onto the PCB so basically what I'm going to do is just press that against the um, PCB, stick some solder paste on it and then just sort of squish it down to actually hopefully print some fresh paste onto the pads without getting too much all over the place but making sure we get some, at least some, on each pad. And in terms of the amount of paste on a pad, you know, the minimum literally is some, I, if there is any visible paste that's enough and you don't want too much to um, so that it sort of splodges over multiple pads so I'm just going to line that up carefully with the pads it's also important that this thing doesn't slip once you start putting the paste on but I mean you can always, if you get it wrong, you can always just wipe it off and start again so it's not, not a huge deal, it's just time to uh, actually do it if you keep having to make that sort of attempt so I'm holding this down with the tweezers I'm just going to transfer that to a finger on the side just hold it in position and therefore this has got a bit of a spring in it so it's a bit hard to get it totally flat on the PCB that's just that's fairly close I'm just going to stick some paste on there see one of the problems when you're down to this sort of size is you know the surface tension of the solder paste is pretty much everything and um, one issue with small apertures it's got a habit of sticking you know it wants to stick to the sides of the apertures in the pad in the stencil more than it wants to stick to the PCB which is why for really fine pitch stuff you tend to want to use thinner stencils but also you can get finer pitch yeah solder paste that's got much finer grains in it but it's very hard to get hold of in small quantities so um, you're pretty much stuck with whatever you can get so you have to sort of give this a good sort of squish down to actually get it to go through and actually stick to yeah, although it will touch the pad it's quite likely to actually just touch the pad and then just stick to the side of the stencils when you lift the stencil so just give it a good sort of patting down to just actually press it against the pad as long as the stencil is fairly flat on the board there isn't too much risk of it squishing out sideways Like it's fairly down now. Obviously the critical thing here is that it mustn't move sideways. So you need to be very careful that when you lift it off it lifts directly upwards. So say so fortunately here we've got quite a long piece. So I'm just gonna support it and press it down near and I can just lift it off directly upwards and it swings up. And we've got a decent amount of paste on all but about three pads there so I think I'm just going to try just manually putting a little bit of paste on those remaining pads rather than re trying to reprint it. Again it's a bit hit and miss, I'll sort of stick a blob there and just sort of squish it around with tweezers just to get some on there. And at a pinch you could actually do it like this, but it's, it's very hit and miss, at least with a stencil you get most of the pads get a decent amount of paste on them and you don't get too much sort of squishing of extra, extra paste. Just run that between the pads to just clear it. It's not, a little bit of paste between the pads isn't usually a big problem because it will tend to sort of flow into the pad, but you know, what you want to avoid is big lumps. And, and also lots of it actually underneath the component because you know if that's under the component there's not really much you can do about it if it does short. Well, I think we've got some on there. Right we're going to stick a new connector on. Um, although chips you can probably get away with reusing, um, connectors they will get distorted and generally sort of knackered by the removal process so um, you really got to put a new one on. It's a waste of time trying to reuse things like this. Fortunately this device has got these four corner pads so um, that's quite useful for tacking it down. So I'm just going to place it carefully in the right position. 
one thing you want to try and avoid is sort of plating and then having to move it sideways too much because again that'll tend to sort of push the paste sideways a little bit but it can be under, unavoidable but the thing is to drop it lightly get it into the right position and then push it down to actually just then squishes the paste out a little bit all right so that's in line so um i'm doing the soldering iron left-handed because obviously the most precise thing is the um the connector so uh, i'm right-handed i'm using the soldering iron in my left hand because the I need to get this down. Yeah. So as it squished down, it moved sideways a little bit. Try and get it back. Again, this is something if you haven't got your pads totally flat, what happens is you push it down and it will just slide sideways as it slides off the pad. It's a bit tricky because the camera is actually in the way of where I actually want to put my hand. Pretty much in line, so just gonna dab at two of these corner pads. If even just that first corner pad that's now locked it in place, so that's now in the right position. It's very important that actually to actually be pushing it down when you do the initial sort of tacking down so the thing doesn't end up at an angle. Um, so as, as long as the pads are you know touching all the um, PCB trace is totally flat then it doesn't really matter that you, if you, know, you only need the tiniest amount of solder paste to then flow into the um, underneath the pad whereas if it's not totally flat then it can actually sit slightly off the board and it needs more, more, more solder to fill the gap. And I'll just change to a finer tip now just to get these pads I'm literally just going to touch ideally where the pad meets the track just to get a slight bit of solder flowed into it. Again, I'm not using hot air because that tends to distort the plastic on a connector and on a an IC you could probably do it with hot air um, but with these connectors the plastic goes really soft under hot air so you just touch the thing and it will distort it so you won't be able to plug anything into it. On this the, uh, the contacts are very slightly sort of they move very slightly so as you touch it you can usually see the contact just move very very slightly just to tells you that you've actually managed to touch it and so if you're touching it with the iron and it's got paste on it it is going to flow and solder all right so that should be it so i'm just going to do a quick continuity test because the, these connectors haven't got many sort of, they're a bit fiddly to plug and unplug so it's easy to test it rather than just plug the lcd in to see if it works i just want to actually just do a continuity test it's easy to fix rather than unplug the thing and then rework it again from your perspective. Yep, so we've got a good connection there. Um, don't think we've got any shorts. Right, so let's plug it in and see what happens. Right, I'm just going to put the LCD back on. Obviously I took the LCD off because any cleaner or flux that gets into the back of these things you, you know, you'll get some visible uh, artifacts. I'm just dab dabbing this again just to make sure there's no remnants of flux cleaner or anything still stuck in the holes that might have been just sit sitting in a little puddle under the board against the bench because say if any liquid's getting into the backs of these displays and they, uh, you just get visible blobs which look horrible and you'll never get them out again. Unfortunately these nano LCDs you can't really stick them down because the rear reflector is sort of, it occupies most of it so uh, I designed this little clip to uh, secure them which works quite nicely.
these plugs are quite a fiddle to get in. The trick is to sort of get them to the point where you can feel it's just seated and then push it in. Fortunately they do make a little click when they go in so you can tell they're seated but it's, it's getting the thing in the right place in the first place is the tricky bit. Now hopefully Yeah, working. One little detail on these panels. Um, because of cosmetic reasons, the only places we could put the breakouts were here and here. Um, we found on the, pro the first prototype that they were really difficult to break out of the panel because of the, the structure of the, um, the, you know, the... You had to sort of bend it in weird, weird direction. So the way I fixed that is actually I've done some sort of double breakouts here. So I had to take out the PCB, just take stick a screwdriver over the other hole and just break the whole um, tab off and then freeze the whole, whole thing from the panel. <laughs>